The long established ecosystems of Palau both sustain and protect its population and its many visitors. Over the years and generations, a multitude of areas have been set aside and elevated to a higher protected status due to their special increased biological and cultural importance. Numerous sites are incorporated and contain ecosystems ranging from forests and river systems to mangroves, reefs and reef channels. The reefs and mangroves, forests and rivers provide food, water, medicines, building materials and hold great cultural significance to Palauans. Certain threats have however been seen within Palau's protected areas and are known as invasive species. Um, to understand what an invasive species is, you have to first understand what an introduced species is. And an introduced species is any organism, animal, plant, pathogen, or disease that is not native to a certain ecosystem, but is brought in or introduced into that ecosystem uh, through human activities. And once that organism is introduced into the area, it becomes an invasive species if the population or their numbers become very abundant and then they start to cause harm to the environment, economy or even human health. In terms of island ecosystems, um, invasive species, they bring about little change, usually detrimental. And usually we are unable to correct any, for example, the brown tree snake. There's no way it can be eradicated in Guam. If they're trying, they're still trying, but it's it's, and the loss that came with the introduction was so profound that there's, you know, you lose, you, nine species went extinct, nine bird species went extinct. That in itself is just a total ecological loss. Uh, some of the main invasive species found in Palau are um, Moremia, Mikania, Mission Grass and Imperata. And for animals is uh, monkeys, fruit flies, rhinoceros beetle, and cats, dogs, and rats. The biggest threat is the, the gabias. It has a big effect on the, the trees, which is the habitats for all uh, species uh, from the ground up, you know, so. It has a heart-shaped leaf with vines, and it, it covers uh, the canopy. That does affect the growth of the trees, especially the endemic uh, trees of Palau and uh, also it uh, affects the birds that live there too so yeah so uh, the the work that we do to eradicate the invasive species is that we we identify the site we identify the size and what type of uh, gabias or invasive species in that area and what we do is we trace the vines all the way to the root of the problem we we cut the root of the problem put some uh, special medication to stop it from growing and then whatever left that we took out uh, that we cut we bring it out to the road or on the side to get picked up we don't want to leave anything there also we just want to make sure that there's no seeds or any other parts of the uh, the invasive species there and it has potential to grow in that area <laughs> I was a program of Pansai Trabalu, a bird sanctuary. I was a bird sanctuary. I was a bird sanctuary. I was a State Public Works Road and Ground. Thank you.
When forest is cleared or trees cut down, the vine quickly grows and climbs surrounding trees. If people clear any forest, they must be aware that the vine will grow. They need to return and clear the vine that grows regularly. Clearing parties like this one use the same tools as can anyone else. It is better to be vigilant and stop the vine growing when it's small. When we have healthy forest ecosystems, we stay healthy too. So we just dumped a fresh load of uh, kabias there. That fresh load will sit there and dry up for a couple of weeks to a month. And then we mix it with other materials, natural materials, organic materials. And then from this organic material, we we'll it, let it sit for about two to three months. And then we keep mixing it and the, the finished product is potting soil. And then after the potting soil is done and ready, we use it to plant decorative fruits and trees. Palau's reefs and marine ecosystems are also under threat from invasive species. One such example is the crown of thorn starfish, which, if left unchecked, can destroy vast areas of coral reefs. The crown of thorns is a particular problem as numbers can increase rapidly and cause great harm to our reefs. We need our reefs to remain healthy, especially our marine protected areas. When numbers increase, working parties are organized to remove as many as possible. Other marine ecosystems in Palau have also come under threat from invasive species, including invasive anemones in Jellyfish Lake. So during uh, our studies, we found a brown sea anemone that was not native to Jellyfish Lake, and we first found it at the dock, and from there we've seen it spread from the dock all the way around the lake and it was growing on mangrove roots on the rocky bottoms and it was just basically covering everything that uh, was a hard substrate. So we do see studies that have shown that uh, invasive species can have a huge negative impact on the ecosystems that are isolated and um, we will if this uh, trend of having introduced species into the lakes continue then there could be that possibility of also seeing the same thing affect these isolated ecosystems in the lakes. Yeah. What we need to keep in mind is that invasive species are opportunistic. They, they don't usually travel between islands by themselves. They usually get there through some other means. 
Islanders are a cultural people and, and part of that culture is to when you visit another island you bring stuff over that, that, that sort of shows your appreciation for uh, you know the exchange. That's, that's a big part of island, uh, island life. And that's a perfect opportunity for an invasive species. A, a little fire ant, a moth, a rhino beetle, a baby brown tree snake. I mean, there's, there's all, all kinds of creepers and crawlers and, 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 and things that are out there that, that will get into a new, you know, isolated island system and just wreak havoc. You know, you see something, say something. As far as invasive species goes, you see, you see that a coconut tree's leaves are dying. Report it. Call somebody. The Bureau of Agriculture is there. Take phone calls, and they will, you know, find a way to check it out. So uh, my advice to the the local community is um, that uh, if you see invasive species, uh, most uh, specifically gabias, please uh, let us know, uh, and then we can we can inform you on the best way. Uh, to eradicate or uh, give you information of how to uh, reduce the spread of uh, gabias and other invasive species. If you're unaware of what are the invasive species, uh, please uh, contact uh, our plant state programs, uh, PCS, and they will give you information and guidance on how to reduce the spread of uh, different types of invasive species.